If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. We're looking for and trying to bring more badasses. fitness badasses to our audience. And Julie Bauer is definitely a fitness badass. And I'm talking about from... Not, of course, she's a you know she was a CrossFit competitor a while ago. She's very fit. She knows her stuff, but just fitness information. She's got a blog that reaches millions of people. She started a podcast about a year ago that is consistently ranked now in the top twenty or thirty all the time on iTunes. And she's just an awesome human being. She interviewed me on her podcast a little while ago, and I had such a great conversation with her and such great chemistry that we invited her here down to Mind Pump Media headquarters. And so me and Adam have a great conversation with her, and it ran, I mean, this conversation went all over the place, and it got really deep. Yeah, she, you know, she's got a really good message. It's, it was really exciting. It was exciting for me to talk to her because I, just from what you had told me interviewing, you're like, man, you're gonna like this girl. She's really cool. And when we, when we sat down, like I did, I had no idea. I assumed that she had this like big team of people that are like running her business. But she is literally running the show all by herself. And to me, that's extremely impressive because she maintains uh, an incredibly healthy, fit, strong physique, and she crushes it on business. And then she's recently been married a year and a half now, and she just seems to be killing it on all levels with some pretty damn good balance. And and, and where she knows she's out of balance, she's aware of, you know, so mm-hmm. and I know that uh, we talk about that in this mm-hmm. episode. So. I think uh, what and, she, it, and she talks about like for your female listeners, she talks about what happened to her with her fitness. Like she went into to CrossFit, right, right, trained her ass off, performed very well. Her her, her body started rebelling on her. She was overdoing it, under eating. Her body stopped responding. She realized that something's not right, and so you'll hear in this episode what she did to kind of reverse things and correct them, so her body started getting healthy again and started responding. To exercise again, I know we've talked about that topic on our podcast quite a few times, but you get to hear a personal experience from someone like Julie, who's a great communicator. So you also hear that you know we talk about you know all the time on the show that your greatest strength is your greatest weakness, and uh, you, she definitely shares where this has been something that's been definitely close to her where. You know, what made her very successful is also what in turn could have ended up hurting her, but she was very aware of that. Exactly. So you can find her blog, which I highly suggest. It's got recipes on there, great information. Paleo OMG. So that's P. Uh, no, no, no. It's Paleo MG, right? Well, Paleo MG is, what I guess, how you pronounce it, but P A L E O M G dot com. Uh, there's also Paleo MG Uncensored. That's her podcast. She likes to cuss on it. It's pretty funny. Um, and then her cookbook is Julie Bauer's Paleo Cookbook. So without any further ado, here we are talking to Julie Bauer. So funny to hear hey, you guys Julie. in person. Do we do we sound Do we look, look the way we yeah. sound? Well, I knew what you guys looked like. Okay. You know, I like less or more creeping. handsome. <laughs> way more handsome. Wait, wait. No, I I do think you guys are more handsome in person. (laughs) I'm serious. I think you guys are more handsome in person. (laughs) I didn't think you were ugly in the first place. You're more handsome in person. I was just going to say, it depends how, you know what I mean? Depends what you were not attractive in the picture, and now you're normal, so you're more (laughs) handsome. Now you're okay. (laughs) I I ask that because I'm always going for that, right? Because I feel like in this day and age, I don't know how many people I've been surprised by. I meet them, and I'm like, God, you're way smaller, or you're less fit than you looked. Because they do all this fake shit. They put up their best photos that are all professionally done, or they got all the Photoshop going on, and then you meet them in real life, and you're like, oh, wow, this is like... Not what I saw on Instagram, so I always like to hear that. Okay, that at least all I'm the putting time. out. I'm putting out who I am, right? I'm, I'm not trying. Like you see me, you're like, oh, okay, he's more impressive, or he's better looking well, in person. You know what I get? So I get people will tell me when they meet me, I thought you were bigger. Oh Maybe. no. Yeah, because I'll take like in the so when I first started Instagram. Before well, that's I, what happens when you're Jack because you're shredded. So people people assume when someone's shredded, they think big. Right? You know that. Well, how many times have you been lean and been told you look big? Well, that's part of it, but part of it is also when we first. Because I got on Instagram later. See, Adam was like hammering me like, dude, you got to get on. This is before we started Mind Pump. You got to get on Instagram. You got to get on Instagram. So I finally get on there and I'm like, well, I don't know what to do. Mainly for all the booty pics. That's yeah, how I was that's like, dude, you got to get on there. There's so booty pics all over booties. the place. Yeah. It's just like straight porn. <laughs> yes, it is. All it's, the time. It's You know what's weird to me? Why are you looking at booty pics that on, is a on good, Instagram when you can just go to... Anyway. That's a good discussion. Though. Go ahead. Keep yeah. going. So I'm, I, so I'm looking. I'm scrolling through Instagram and, and right away, I, I think I messaged him. And I'm like, dude, this is... 
narcissism hell. Like, I don't even want to do this. It's stupid. He's like, you got to do this if you're in fitness. Like, this is the this is the medium. So I'm like, all right. So I'm scrolling through. I'm like, oh, okay. So you just post pictures of yourself flexing. And I'm like, but there's an area where I can post good information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a flexing picture with the right lighting and pump. And then underneath it, I'm going to put some good information. So he used to make fun of me. He'd call them uh, helpies. Helpies. Yeah. I'd, I'd post, <laughs> they weren't selfies. They're helpies. Helpies. So, so I would post these like pumped up. Like I'd get a good pump and then the lighting would be right. And so then when people meet me, they're like, you don't look like that in person. I'm like, give me, let, me, give me, let me get a pump. Let me stand in the right light. And then that'll look like me. I did think you were taller. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you posted a picture recently with your girlfriend and your bicep is like the size of your girlfriend. Yeah. Well, she's Those small. Hu- yeah. So she must be really small. Yeah. So I, how tall are you? Uh, six foot. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like, in heels. Yes. In heels. <laughs> yeah. So I'm five, seven and I felt like I was not like very much shorter than you, mm-hmm. but I have heels on. But you get your heels on. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I, so I just imagined you taller because your girlfriend was Small. So much, yeah. I did that smaller. on purpose. Well, five seven is yeah. pretty tall for a woman. I, five seven, five eight. You're starting to get up there yeah. in the taller range. Yeah. Is what yeah. the average woman's five five or five four? What I don't is know. what is it? I have no idea. Yeah, no, you're above average. average for sure. Uh, for me. You're also very fit. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, 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 very fit. Now uh, you, you have a long history in fitness. You've been doing this for quite a while, right? I not as long as you guys, but I've been in the. <laughs> I've been working out continuously and in the fitness world probably for seven years. So you started working out in seven years or you started working in it or both? So I started working out in high school. Um, I was on the swim team for a long time. And then when I stopped doing swim team, I was like, okay, I need to start working out. My body's changing. You know, I was going through puberty. And so just like um, I started watching Big Mouth because of you guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> How funny is that? Oh, show? is that oh, right? Funny. I talked about it on my podcast. I was like, if you're easily offended. Oh, uh, we're instantly friends that you like that. Oh my God. It's so like, it was seriously puberty right there. But, it's so accurate. Oh my God. It's <laughs> so accurate. And it's funny seeing the guy side because I only had the female. I don't have any brothers. So watching the guy side, so funny. Hey, let oh me God. tell you, it's very accurate. It's super. <laughs> yes, it's I'm very accurate. I'm watching it and I'm literally remembering. Stories. Watching going, right, right. Oh, That's what? what I loved about it. So I, that, the stories that they tell in there, there's, I think almost everyone I have a story that's either exactly the same or like that. That's, <laughs> totally. how, that's how accurate it is. Like thinking of how much, you know, as a girl, you love your mom and you're just so, you're the best mom. And then once you get your period, you're like, get out. Yeah. I was like, total freak. That God, was, does that yeah. really happen? I got oh, a daughter. It's well, coming. You're a dad. So you're on the better side of things. So, uh, so I, but now I'm wondering now because I'm, I'm divorced, right? So she, she my kids are with me half the time. What if, uh, will she be like that with me? Or No, just, no it's going to be, girlfriend? it will be toward, it'll be towards your, your ex-wife and what will happen is like. I'll be the cool guy? Yes. Awesome. Yes. So I want to live with yes. dad. I'm uh, going to live with dad, right? Uh, this is going to happen all through like 13 to like 16. She's going to want to come live with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm almost 30 and my mom and I still butt heads every single time. And my dad, I'm like, you're the best human in the whole wide world. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. So you're on the better side. But I, I was always interested in fitness and I was always interested in the idea of being able to change what genetics had given me. So I just, you know, when people say, this is your genetics, that's all you get. You got to move on from it. I'm like, no, I'm seeing all these people change their bodies and morph them. And I want to be able to do that. And so I started getting into fitness, but it was very two hours on the stair stepper. Like you did the cardio. Yeah. Did all cardio. But then I, I noticed when I started lifting, it gave me a lot of confidence and I was really, I loved being able to walk into the weight room where it was all males and be confident in my lifts and comfortable with dumbbells and barbells. And I love that confidence it gave me, but I was pretty incredibly awful, insecure person and hated everything about myself. And so I would always turn back to the stair stepper, just like two hours on the stair stepper all the time. And um, it wasn't until college, I had a boyfriend at the time who did CrossFit in our just college gym, and I started dabbling in CrossFit, and I was so weak. I couldn't do a push-up on my toes. I couldn't do a pull-up, like even slightly lift my body. And so um, I started doing push-ups on my knees and pull-ups on the assisted pull-up machine, and 
it just started to change my body and I, it made me so confident. I'm like, I can walk in and I can do an overhead squat and everybody's like, what the hell are you doing? It just made me so confident and I really kind of fell in love with. Talk confidence. about that moment where for I, I swear I remember so many of my clients when that when that happens where they go from the the woman who's really afraid to go into the weight room because of all these dumbbells and these meathead guys around and just super intimidating to the the reverse of that feeling once you finally like put it all together like I got this it's changing my body I know what the fuck I'm doing in here like how much did that change your confidence level and you as a as a person who's into health and fitness it was it was drastic i mean i i always I was just completely insecure. I mean, I remember looking in the mirror when I was a teenager or into my college years, and I literally couldn't even point out one thing I liked about myself. Mm. Like, didn't like my eye color, didn't like anything. It was so sad, and I never was really given the tools to find confidence. I was just thinking about listening to your podcast and hearing all these different stories. I'm like, why am I the way I am, and what really created my story? I think about, I had like a a friend in middle school who taught me to be bulimic, and I had a friend in high school who was teaching me how to be anorexic. Oh, wow. And so those were those like tools that I was given. I wasn't around confident, empowered women. And so the only empowered people I had in my life were, I started working out at a, um, like a bodybuilding gym in Colorado. And so all the only confident people I had in my life were men, but I was still very intimidated by them. And so when I found CrossFit, it kind of put men and women on the same playing field. CrossFit did that yes. very well. And I was beating guys in workouts. And that was so empowering to me. That gave me so much confidence that you'd see these like meathead, like just annoying guys at the gym. And then I'd be able to kind of put them in a place. They would almost talk down to me. And then I'd be able to put them in a, in their place by beating them in a workout or right. having better form them than them in a lift. Now, did they start respecting you? Like when you started showing yes. them that you could perform? Yeah. And that was so cool. I worked at a I still work out at this gym, but it was a CrossFit gym that started with rugby players. And these dudes would walk in and I'd be telling them what to do and they would not respect me whatsoever. And then I would do a workout with them and that completely changed. And I had all these guy friends now that didn't talk about bodies like women did. And it really was able, I was able to change my confidence in my own self because of those people I was around. You know, you said something earlier about, you know, having bad examples from like, sound like friends that you had that were close to you that were bulimic and anorexic. I was just listening to Gary V interview Tim Ferriss and he said something on there very similar to what I've said on the podcast a bunch of times regarding uh, financial stuff, but they actually were talking about working out and nutrition and behavior the same way, which is we're kind of uh, a reflection of the five people that we spend the most time with. Everything from totally. financially, emotionally, spiritually, every every which way. And so looking back now, do you see like the, the, like the five friends or so that you used to hang out with and think, oh my God, I wish I would have could, could go back and tell myself, like, you got to get away from her. She's unhealthy for you. And then is that something you think about now as a grown woman in your 30s? Yes. And I, I've talked about this on my podcast of cutting out those people in your lives that don't make you a better person. And especially with social media, I unfollow people all the time. And it's not their own fault. It's my own insecurities. And I say, okay, I can't have this person in my life anymore. And looking back, there's so many different friendships, even though those friendships taught me a lot and those relationships taught me a lot. So many friendships could have changed um, the way I presented myself and thought about myself. And you say that those five people thinking about the five people that are strongest in my life. My husband is obviously one of those top people, and he is a person who. He doesn't talk about body constantly. He's like, oh, I need to lose a little bit of weight or I want to get a little bit bigger for our wedding. It's, But it's not his main concern all the time. He doesn't just stand in the mirror and like critique himself. He's like, eh, okay, I got to start mm -hmm. cutting back on some carbs or something <laughs> like that. And then he moves on. And his sister, my sister-in-law, same thing. You know, She's like, oh, I've gained a little weight. Move on and lose it and just move on with their day instead of thinking about their bodies constantly. It's they think about their work and their friendships and their relationships. There's so many other things on their mind and that those people in my life now have built me to 
not obsess about all those little things that are just the minor. What details. what advice do you give like a, a young girl that makes that decision? Like you just you made a great point about you know I'll just unfollow somebody because of whatever reasons. Like what are those reasons? What is what's the criteria? to be in my circle now like when you think about that like what do you what do you what are you evaluating to make that decision like you know what I love this person maybe they've been in my life for seven years and a friend or what like that but I need to move on if I'm going to grow like how do you what do you evaluate to make that decision I think if something makes you feel negative about yourself for me if I I love following different fitness people but if I'm looking at this one girl and I can think of this one girl who posts amazing workout videos but she has this fantastic body and it makes me question my own body. Mm. And why am I questioning my own body? That's her body has nothing to do with my body. Right. And you know, she has different interests and I just compared for years and I stopped comparing. And so if a person or someone I follow or have in my life makes me question um, the like root down beliefs that I have and the happiness that I want in my own life, then I'm going to cut them out and this, of my life. And this is very self-aware of you because it, it has a very strong influence over how we feel about ourselves. I think people lie to themselves when they say, well, it's not, it doesn't have an influence. It's, it does. This is why, you know, marketing is a billions of dollar industry is that when you're bombarded with images or whatever, it does change how you start to think. And then that sh- starts to change how you behave. And you're just, more aware of that in the sense that you're just unfollowing these pages because I know what goes through people's mind. They'll think, well, I should unfollow this page and they'll think, well, it's, I should just think about it differently. So what's the big deal? But what you're doing is actually quite intelligent. You're just changing the images that you're exposed to, which gives you the space to examine those things, which gives you the space to change how you think and then change how you behave. Now I have a question for you. At this point when you're doing CrossFit and you're finding that you can perform and that you're stronger and that you 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 feel better in, in that sense. Do you switch your your identification from the way I look to now I need to perform? And was that a good thing initially? And did it ever turn into a bad thing? Yes, absolutely. That was the best part. Is when I started CrossFit, I went to a CrossFit competition and I saw these women and not only were they all cheering for each other and empowering each other, which I had never been around. I had only ever been around catty women or just my close friends who, you know, were just not empowering each other in the same way. And they, everything was based off how you performed. It wasn't about how you looked. It wasn't about how you looked in a certain pair of shorts or how cute your outfit was. And that was at the start of CrossFit. This Not so much now. But <laughs> it, it was just about how you performed. And there was small women and big women and, you know, women who had who were ripped and then women who weren't. It was just every single kind of women there. But it was based on how you performed that day. And what I loved is you'd think, oh, this woman, she's so ripped, so she's going to do the best in a workout. And that wasn't the case at all. And so I'm like, okay, I want to compete. I want to do this. I want to feel like that. And I want to perform well. And so that mindset of obsessing about how I looked completely changed into how much I could lift and how fast I could go through a workout. And so it was really, I was really able to put my obsessions into something new and um, that's when I started getting into diet. I didn't know much about diet um, and started looking into the zone diet and started doing that and seeing my body change and started getting into the paleo diet. And so my obsession, my obsessions with body weight changed in a healthy way at first into just lifting and getting better form and performing faster. And then it got a little, a little bit hazy as I started obsessing more about food and, um, working out more. I just got addicted. I mean, at the end of the day, I was addicted to obsessing over my body and then I was addicted to working out and I would work out and these cross, you guys know CrossFit is very high intensive. Mm -hmm. And I was doing at one point, like three to four workouts a day. Because I was working at multiple gyms. And you're not trying to be a competitor. That's what it's important to note, right? Because it's different if you're trying to be an actual competitor, an athlete. Are you just trying to get in shape and you're training that much? No. Th- at that point, I was competing. Oh, you were competing? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. You were doing pretty well. Okay. Yes. So I was competing. She was very competitive, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's different then. Because if you're competing that much, I mean, you're you're an athlete. You're It's a sport now. Totally. You know? Right. Totally. And so 
I am working out, I'm working at multiple gyms and then someone would be like, Hey, do you want to work out? I'm like, shit, I already worked out twice today, but whatever, (laughs) I'll do it again. And, and so I really got addicted to working out. I just, as you know, like all the endorphins, it feels so good. And, and it was also like, I can work out more than you can. And Mm. it became super competitive. I'm like, I'm not the fastest. I'm not the strongest. I'm not the biggest. So what is going to be my you know, step ahead of everybody else. And that was hopefully working out multiple times a day. <laughs> was there a pivotal point where you recognize that where all of a sudden you're like, oh, fuck, I'm a little out of control here. Was there a moment where you kind of that switch went off for you? Yeah, I I started to see not only was my body changing in an unhealthy way, I was gaining weight. Um, I wasn't sleeping well. I wasn't performing as well in the gym anymore. And I was starting to get closer to injuries. I never had any super intensive um, injuries in CrossFit, but I was getting closer where something just tweaked a little bit and I never had that in the past. Yeah. Were you noticing hormonal issues at this time as well? Sleep issues? Absolutely. Hormonal Mm. issues. And I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm in adrenal fatigue at this point. Like I... I hate what I see in the mirror at this point. I had gained 30, 35 pounds from the day I started CrossFit to my competing days. And I didn't recognize myself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And, you know. And we need it. We we should stop there for a second because this is very important. You fight your body. uh, You can get only so far. Once these, if you continue to ignore these signals. And some further than others, right? That's where it's it's different. It's hard. And these signals start to get louder and louder and louder. And when you're in a situation like you were, where you're just pushing your body harder and harder and identifying with the fact that you can push and outwork other people, your, 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 the adrenal fatigue or the HTPA axis dysfunction or whatever you want to call it gets worse and worse and worse to where you're seeking that cortisol re- release. You're seeking, you're pushing, you're probably increasing your caffeine intake. Uh, food intake starts to change to try to feed this monster that's happening right now. And then you start to gain weight and it's like, what's going, why is my body gaining weight? I'm working out more and more and more. Were you confused? Was this just a moment where you're like, yeah, because when you start lifting and you start power lifting and then you start pushing your body to a crazy level, you see changes. So when I started CrossFit, I lost 30 pounds and then my body started to creep back up, but I wanted that because I wanted to be stronger. So I wanted to gain muscle. I wanted to gain weight. And then you get to this I got to this point where I just, I just didn't like myself anymore and I didn't want to be there. And I, so I would work out more because I'm like, okay, calories in, calories out, Mm. work out more, eat less, and I'll start to see more results. And that just was not the case at all. And then it would lead to binging behaviors because I cook for a living on my blog. And so I'm making food that I don't eat daily. Like I'm making a dessert that I don't make. And so then it would lead to this binging behavior on dessert because I was limiting calories so much all the time. And then I'm like, where do I turn? I have to eat something. And then I would shove everything in my face. Now, is anybody in your circle, because you're obviously in a, in a, in a tight knit uh, community of CrossFit, because that's how CrossFit is. One of the things I like most about CrossFit is when you work out at these facilities, at these places, the good ones, you have a nice tight knit community. Is anybody identifying this for you or helping you? Or is everybody feeding into it? Or are they feeding into it? Feeding into it, big Um, time. So I never had a coach. I only had a close friend who I'm still close friends with as the owner of our gym. And I was working out with him. And he is still to this day works out multiple times a day and he's, you know, 40 and I'm like, your body is going to break down, dude. You got to slow your roll. But that's just what he loves to do. That is his way of doing things. What about like how it probably threw off like your relationships, I would think too. Because when you, I know what it was like when I got, uh, when I was competing and fuck, you were training more than I was even to get on stage. So, uh, and I know how selfish that I was when I was doing that. Did you ever put that together too? Like, were you starting to see less of family and maybe not as much time for your husband? And did you notice anything with your other, your relationships because of this obsession about the working out? Well, this, it was at a good time in my life that I did this because it was just out of college. I was working full time at CrossFit gyms. And so I was making jack shit for money. I was under the poverty line. So it's not like I could go out and do many things. Mm. And so, and I'm a pretty... Um, I like to be at home. I'm a homebody. I get 
a bit of social anxiety. And so I like being by myself. And so I wasn't going out very often. So it was a good time, but I definitely, um, it hurt relationships in the aspect of I was just so critical and hard on myself all the time. That's where it hurt more relationships. And it it was just a good time in my life to go through this because yeah. I was just meeting my husband at that time. And he was super supportive of me working out constantly because <laughs> that was had, your thing. Well, yeah, that was just my thing. And but yeah, it, it didn't interrupt too many relationships because I just couldn't do much of anything because I was so poor. And so, <laughs> well, it's good you caught it before it could have. Yes. Been. Yeah, for did sure. You, did, yeah. Was there a moment when you, when you, like a pivotal moment where you're like, okay, like I need to change something. My body's not responding. Like I need to completely change. Or was it more of a gradual? It was. It was pretty cold turkey. So I remember looking in the mirror and I'm like, everything I've been doing is not working. It's not working. So why am I continually doing it? Why am I doing this? And I wasn't feeling the drive for competing. I had competed twice in regionals and I just, I didn't feel the drive anymore and I didn't want to do the the weekend competitions that I'd love so much. And so I'm like, I'm going to work out once a day. I'm going to work out five days a week. And so I'm going to get two rest days in and I'm going to cut down on my weights And so, you know, at our gym, we have heavy weights in intense workouts and I would go sometimes above the RX workouts. I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going down that I feel comfortable in the workout and that my form is never breaking down. And that's kind of how I gauged it. And I had a lot of pushback. I was just going to ask you because by this point, you're one of the top girls in that place, right? You're Mm -hmm. like the, probably the girl. And now you're like working out less, you're doing less weight. How hard was that? It was really hard, especially because I was a coach at the gym at the time. And so I think the head coach and the owner, he wanted me to be a certain way because mm-hmm. he's like, you can always push harder because right. we have- Want everybody to aspire one. to be like yeah. you, right? Yeah, and we have at least one girl who can do RX workouts in the gym. And did they, say, did they say you were lazy or something? Did they use those kind of remarks to you? Like, hey, you just need to work harder. It, no, it was more so they're like- um, CrossFit is not making you bigger. Like going heavier in workouts is not making you Mm -hmm. bigger. I'm like, but it is. I've been doing three workouts a day doing, you know, 95 pound snatch and thrusters and 200 pound deadlifts. I'm going to get bigger because my muscles are getting bigger. And I didn't want to look like that anymore. And I wanted to just feel comfortable in my jeans and confident when I looked in the mirror naked. And these males in the at the gym were just giving me shit about it constantly. And it was really hard. And they were like, no, put more weight on the bar. And mm. I was like, no, wow. I'm not going to fucking do it. Leave you, me alone. You know, not- when it comes to how the body responds to over exercise and under eating, which is very individual. So I want to be very clear. What is overdoing it for one person is, is, is the right amount for someone else and maybe underdoing yeah. it for someone else. But generally speaking, when you're talking about how the body can respond negatively to it, Women do tend to have their bodies are more sensitive to it. And this is very true. When you look at things like HPA axis dysfunction, and this is, I think, one of the reasons why men have an issue when they see a woman saying, Hey, listen, my hair is starting to fall out. I'm not getting my period. Like my skin doesn't look right. I think I'm gaining weight. I'm not feeling the guys are like, What are you talking about? I'm doing it. We're all doing it. We're all pushing ourselves. And the female body tends to respond to these, just like it responds to getting super, super lean differently than a man's will. That's not great for anybody to push ourselves too hard all the time, but the, the the signs and symptoms, a woman will get them much sooner and it's important that you listen to them. It's very, very important that you listen to them because you yeah. can get very fit, you can perform amazing, but once your body starts to think, oh, this is uh, this environment is not ideal to procreate or not ideal to it's whatever. It's so hard it though changes. because the message that's out there, because that you're like the 1%, right? That actually go above and beyond that actually push that that way so the message is you know you got to and push more and do more because a majority of the people do need more a majority of people are sitting on their ass and so the message that we've been preaching for the last 20 years is you know motivational shit and no days off and beast mode and we've been pushing everybody because i remember that as a trainer i remember thinking 
like, man, these people just don't fucking move and that you're constantly trying to motivate in that direction. And what we but nobody ever talks about, well, what's too much? It's, and, and the oh, reason no. why I'm, I'm and the reason why I'm mentioning the, the differences between men and women in this is because we have a lot of trainers that listen. And I was a trainer for a long time. And I remember like it's you, you have to be able to pay attention to the signals that different people that different people's bodies will send them, but also different differences between men and women. And, you know, they just did, they've done some recent studies on fasting, for example, which if you're healthy can be very healthy thing. It's got some great benefits. But they find that when when women in particular push fasting too often, even if their calories are where they should be, they start to have, you know, issues with menses. And then they'll start to notice symptoms like hair loss and stuff like that. And it, they, send, they tend to be a little bit more sensitive to certain things uh, like fasting, like calorie restriction, like getting super, super, super lean or super high intensity exercise, mainly because we, and it's important to know these things to pay attention to them because we're not all the same. And so those signals we need to pay attention to, and especially if you're training, like I said, men and women, because if you, again, if you have someone saying these things to you, like, listen to them, like, listen, mm-hmm. like you're saying, hey, my body's not responding. They're not listening to you. No. And that, that was really hard. And as you're talking about this, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I did have hair loss. I lost my period. I had incredibly awful cystic acne. And that had only started when I started doing CrossFit and oh, that wow. many workouts a day. And I like forget about all these things. It feels like a lifetime ago, but it's really all hormonal long. signs for those yeah. listening, right? Yep. And, and I was only around males and I was around males who weren't aware of any of this stuff. And so they're like, yeah, more is better. More is better. And I think me going through like, no, I'm not pushing that anymore because I don't like where I'm at and I don't know what the next year is going to look like, but I'm cutting back. And and what? how did your body respond when you started to do that? Was it a long process? What did you notice at first? It was probably, it t- took me probably three years to lose the 30 pounds. And what I also said, I and I talk about this on my podcast a lot too, I it was like my fuck it moment. I'm like, fuck this. I have worked so hard and I'm not seeing the results. So I'm going to listen to my body. I'm going to give it rest days. I'm going to eat more of what I want because I was so restrictive. I was being like so carb restrictive. Um, And I started adding in more carbs like when I was craving them and I started losing weight. And I... I just had restricted my diet so much. I was so restrictive with calories that I was actually feeding it the calories that it wanted. And I was giving it rest days so my muscles could actually recover and I could see them start to change. But it was probably three years Mm -hmm. that it took for me to lose those 30 pounds, um, for my skin to start to change, my hair to start to change. It's been, it's probably been like five years now of things starting to really change and morph. And I can start seeing my body, um, become more uh, toned and more respond yeah exactly respond to the work that I'm putting into it right. yeah it's crazy and how long okay so before you made this 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 switch where you're like okay I'm gonna you know cut back on my workouts I'm gonna eat a little bit differently how long before that were you doing the hard intense workouts just for perspective because you're saying it took about three years for you to really fully come out of it how long did it take you to get into it um if you really add it all up and you look at all the things that you did how long it was probably Two years. So, and I, the reason why I say that is because, you know, I'll work with online clients and we'll, t- we'll talk on the podcast and people will tell me, I'm doing everything you're saying. I've, you know, I had all the symptoms of adrenal fatigue or HTPA axis dysfunction or whatever you want to call it. I've cut down on my workouts. I'm just focusing on resistance training. I'm eating, I'm, I'm nourishing my body differently with food. I'm trying to focus on my sleep. It's been six months and my body's just not changing overnight and I wanted you to say that because people need to realize like it takes it takes a long time of you ignore, ignoring your body to get to that point where it really shuts down it takes a while to get out of it yeah it does it and ta- I, I get people asking questions they're like how long did it take you to really start to see results in the gym I'm like well I've been through all kinds of different things but it's been seven years to get me to where I am now and I can't wait to see what where I am in another seven years mm. as I continue to take care of my body in a good way, not just destroying it every single day and also not stressing about it. And you talk about cortisol regularly. Mm-hmm. That was a huge part of why my body changed in a negative way was because I stressed out constantly. I woke up. I hated myself. I went to bed. I hated myself. I just was in this constant state of stress. And when I finally stopped like 
not looking in the mirror and obsessing about something, like actually saying something positive to myself and thinking like, oh, that's cool. Like I can kind of see my quad. I can like see it poking through a little bit and just being like, oh, cool. That's a great change. Moving on with my day, not having that stress hormone insane in my body was a huge huge thing and i can't wait to see in an ever, another 7 years how those changes will continually and the isn't it, isn't it crazy isn't it crazy though how the self hate can can drive us to be successful though yeah and i always and you say, identify with it right i always talk about how your greatest strength is your greatest weakness and you know i'd love for you to unpack like because obviously you're a very successful woman you've had a lot of success not not just in crossfit but also in business yeah we'll get into that too. and i i want to talk about how where did those characteristics come from? Like unpacking it all the way to your childhood. Like where did it stem from? And then how did it actually drive you to probably be very successful for a long time? And then now this turning point of realizing like, oh shit, like a lot of what made me successful and what I am today also is par- partially holding me back. <laughs> That's funny. It's like just to think about in general, because I think a lot of what I do stems from people, um, saying I can't do something. And I grew up incredibly insecure. And one of the big things is people are going to hate you no matter what you do. Give me an example. Like when you were a kid, think of a story that like impacted you. Like, oh man, someone told me I couldn't do this and instantly I'm going to do that. Do you remember shit like that when you were a kid? And I just remember girls were just so fucking mean. Mm. And like I I was talking to a friend the other day about this. Like I had a girl who threw it was like Glee. Did you guys ever watch Glee? No. Probably not. You don't seem like big Glee fans. <laughs> but we're aware of it though. <laughs> yeah. Like the dorks in school, like they'd had like slushies thrown in their face. Oh. And that was literally like my childhood. Like oh, a wow. frosty thrown in my face. And this girl's like, You're a whore. And oh like, sh- fuck. I'm 13 years yeah, old. I'm a virgin. Like, <laughs> people were just so mean. And I remember I, like, I just remember, like, I was wearing, you know, the furry Ugg boots at one point with a skirt. And this girl was like, I'm walking by and she's like, I can't believe she, what she's fucking wearing. And we're talking shit. And then, like, three weeks later, they're starting to wear that same sort of outfit. Oh, wow. Just, like, dumb, petty shit that you're almost like, okay, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Maybe somebody's not going to like it. Maybe somebody is. But i rather be happy with who I am. And I think that really traveled over into what I do in business. I have people who hate me all every day, all day on some sort of social media, on an email, on a message, on my blog. Someone will always hate it, but at least I'm putting out what I believe in mm. into the world. And I think that's what's really molded me into my own business person is I'm going to do what I think is right. And I am going to push health. More than anything, um, I really believe in the paleo diet, but I believe in just not eating processed shit. And I'm not a big supplements person. And I want to spread that, that you can find health by not just taking all these supplements and all this bullshit that Mm -hmm. everybody is selling to you. And you can like be the person you want to be. So I don't, I don't know if that answers. No, no, do you you think there's been like a, a, a person or a single best piece of advice that someone gave to you that impacted you that like that resonated with me. And that's definitely has attributed to the success that you've had now. I can't think, I honestly can't think of any one person. Um, CrossFit gave me those tools of if you work hard, you will see results. And I did that transferred over into my business world too. If when people doubt you in your business, but you believe in it, if you're willing to put in the work and adapt with changes in the world and say something's not working, figure out why it's not working and adapt and change, then you're going to have a great business in the at the end of the day if you truly fucking believe in it. So, so many I, parallels in working out and business. Oh, yeah. so much. Oh, so my gosh. Parallels. Yeah. Like CrossFit gave me so many tools. It is. I love it so much. I hate it in so many other ways, but it gave me so many amazing tools and really molded me as a businesswoman, as a just a day to day woman, as like a woman in a relationship with my husband. It molded me in so many different ways. Did you did you start uh, the now? How did you start your fitness business? I know you were a CrossFit coach. Now your blog is by far uh, uh, that's the thing that reaches the most people. I think that's the thing you've done the longest, right? For yeah. Fitnesses. When did you start that? What motivated that? So 
I started, when I started competing in CrossFit, I didn't know how to eat at all. So I needed to figure out my own diet. And I got into paleo. I started reading Rob Wolf and figuring out different ways to eat and what I shouldn't be eating. And I didn't know how to cook at all. So I went online and this was back in 2010 and there were not many paleo websites and if there were they're like nasty fucking food <laughs> i'm like i'm not i don't have sources to elk and i'm not just gonna <laughs> eat elk every day elk like, and bone broth yes <laughs> and like and bone broth wasn't even like a huge thing it was just like in the photos i mean my photos back in the day were horrendous but it was so new and so i just started finding okay how can i make this paleo like a banana bread how can i make a banana bed bread paleo And so I started dabbling in recipes and I'd bring these recipes to the gym I was working out at. And the owner, he was like, well, how about you start um, the nutrition section to our CrossFit website. So I started the nutrition section. God, he's got to love you, man. Yeah. (laughs) How about you just run this? How about you just do this? Yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll do this for free. And so um, I start, I was like right out of college. He's over there like, yeah. Yeah. And so started the nutrition section, loved it, had so much fun with it. And then when I left that gym, I wanted to keep doing it. And my friend's like, you should start a blog. I'm like, I don't know what a blog is. I've kind of heard the word, but I really really don't know what it is. And so he helped me set up this like free template online and I started paleomg.com and started sharing work or weekly recipes, like one recipe a week. And then I, and these were like the most horrific photos ever. I was, cause I was working across the gym all day, every day. So I'd leave probably at four 30 in the morning. I wouldn't get back till 10 at night. So it was like a crock pot recipe in a Tupperware taken at four 30 in the morning under terrible light. I can't believe anybody came to my website. It was so gross. And then, um, there was a need for it though. At that time. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. And so people started coming to my website, word of mouth. Facebook was very different back back in the day when it was so much more fun than it is now, people would share a recipe and their, you know, 400 friends would see it. And then another friend would try it and share it with all their friends. So I started getting this traffic and more and more people started coming to my website. And Did it grow fast or was it a, a slow and gradual? I think it was kind of slow and gradual at the beginning. And then um, I did this post. I was competing in CrossFit and I did this post about... I, cause I was gaining weight at the time and I was really, it was like my diary cause I wasn't comfortable with the weight I was gaining cause I had gained about 30 pounds and I was more, much, I was much more muscular and I couldn't fit in any jeans and I kept tearing jeans in my ass <laughs> and I was like so insecure. And so I kind of just talked through that, how that I, I wasn't going to let this weight make me feel a certain way. It was like just this diary post about how my body had changed. It was me just getting my words out there because I didn't know who else to talk to. And so I put my diary on the internet and I had all these women who were like, I'm going through the same thing. Oh wow! And it was all these women started connecting with me. I'm like, holy shit, more people are going through this, especially in the CrossFit community when they're trying to compete or their body has changed or they've gained weight or lost weight. And it was it therapeutic for you to write? Yes, like that? Oh. it so is. Like I'm like going through this family thing right now, and I wish I could talk about it on the internet, but you just got to keep some sure. shit to yourself <laughs> because it's so therapeutic. Yeah. It's like not needing a therapist because I can talk everything out. Mm-hmm. So therapeutic, and that's when I think I started to see a spike that people connected with me more as a person, other than just recipes. And I'm it like, was the realism. Yeah big time realism. And I'm like, oh, people like when I talk. Because before I hadn't talked really in my post, it was just like, here's a recipe. This is what it's inspired from. Bye. And then um, people connected with me actually talking about my life. I'm like, maybe I should do this more. And so I started writing a little tidbit in every post about something that had gone in, on in my life. I, I mean, I started talking about everything from Brazilian wax to acne and insecurities to relationship woes as I was like on and off dating my now husband and in the (laughs) dating world. And, and the more I talked, the more people started following my blog. It's amazing when you start to humanize yourself like that. I I stress that the people that are trying to get in this space, whether it be podcasting, social media, blogging is like, you got to humanize yourself because right now all they see is a computer screen or a phone screen. And it's like, Oh, she's giving me all this great advice. 
But then they're like, oh, but she's so different than me. But once you start sharing these stories, it's like, oh, shit, she is human. And she does have insecurities and she does fuck up and she does have hard times. I think it's so important that that people do that. You made a comment earlier about uh, leaving uh, one of the CrossFits. And it was the one where it sounded like you were training three times, running the place, doing the food blog. Did you ever feel like you were taken advantage of? Taken advantage of? No. Because so that CrossFit gym, he he was like, I was working out with this guy who owned this gym and he um, was big in the CrossFit community. He was big into competing and he kind of gave me my start into competing. Mm -hmm. And he also said, he's like, why don't you um, get your CrossFit certification and you can start training here? And I'm like, dude, it's a thousand dollars. I don't have a thousand dollars. I'm lucky if I have like $10 in my account right now. And he's like, I will pay for your um, certification. And then you can just pay me back by working through classes here. And then I'll start paying you as a trainer. And so he really gave me my start That's into good. CrossFit. And um, yeah, so I never felt that way whatsoever. He that's was good. such an amazing guy. He just ended up moving. And that's why I left that gym because he left. And so it was always he was helping me out and yeah, like paving awesome. the way now for that me. You, now that you've built this little empire that you got going with your blogging and podcasting and, and Instagram, talk about like some of the things you love about it and then some of the things you fucking probably hate about it. I love that I get to do exactly what I want. I make my own schedule. I work by myself. I decide what posts are going up. I get to decide who I work with. I, and with what I do, I thought I was going to make $30,000 a year and that was just going to be my life because I grew up, we didn't have a ton of money. I grew up thinking I would be always not making that much money and unhappy. Hmm. That's wow. what I thought. I'm like, that's what you do. And I kind of still feel guilty with my parents sometimes to this day because they're unhappy with what they do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm living my best fucking life. This is so cool. And I hope I get to do this forever. Um, so it's so cool like to get to do exactly what you want to do. And how much money you make depends on how hard you work. It's not somebody caps you off at your salary every year. It's like, hey, you want to do an extra post? You want to work until midnight? You want to get up early and start working the next morning? Then your paycheck is whatever it's going to be. It's it's so crazy to be able to make more money based on how hard you work when so many people don't have that luxury. You mm -hmm. know, so many people are capped at their salary and sorry, like you got to work overtime and we might not pay you overtime. You right. know, like that's just so unfair. Right. And but the thing that I don't like is I'm glued to my phone and my computer yeah. all day, every day. And and you have to deal with mean people, but whatever. Like, you have to deal with mean people. And You're doing something right day. if you got some haters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the way and, it works. You know, sometimes it really breaks me down when I'll just get multiple pe people talking about me. Like, I had this one guy, and I'll, I'll probably never forget it, that he came on my website, and he's like, wow, your legs are so gross. And that wow. just, like, like up insecurity of sure. mine that it just digs deep into my soul, especially, and who knows, it might have not been a guy. You can say you're whoever you want to on yeah. the internet, but it just broke me down that I'm like, fuck, like, why am I even putting myself out of there on the internet? Like, it hurts when people say mean things. So that's the hard part. Yeah. And um, just making sure you balance your day-to-day -day life with my husband and my relationships with my friendships and still get my work done. Like, right before I was about to record this podcast with you guys. I'm working on my computer trying to get a post done and getting everything in on time. And so you're just kind of glued to social media in general and thinking about the next post and working on the next thing and making sure all that information and people are connecting with you. So you're just over connected. Can we can we uh, can I ask you a little bit about your relationship with your mom and dig into that a little bit? Yeah, cuz that's definitely that's definitely been why I am the way, and she's I've been a great fishing. Mom. I've been fishing around it, trying to get there, but I know I know that has to has to play a role in a lot of who you are today, whether it be for the good or the bad, right? Whether yeah. it would be I'm doing everything opposite of what she said or told me to do when I was younger, or I took a lot of things from her, and that's where I'm at now. What are some of the things that like? And we funny you came today because we were literally just talking about. Uh, our parenting, our, the way our parents parented us. Yeah, and, I've heard you guys talk about that. On right. The podcast. So, what are what are some of the things that you took from them? That hey, this is what I'm going to apply to my life. I think I learned that from them. And then some of the things that you said, like I'm going to do things a lot different. My, my mom was an amazing mom. Like she, 
she made me start working when I was 13 years old. She's always had me make sure I get out there, earn my own money, work hard. And she she was such an amazing mom. She set me up for success. They paid for my college. Like they made sure I had a better life than they had growing up. And so they've been amazing with that. Like I love my parents. They're great. And but then I have that relationship with my mom is she does the same thing many people on the internet do is she puts out her own insecurities onto me at times and since I work out on a regular basis and health is a huge part of my life and I know more than she does and I could give her a lot of information. It's hard. She won't really take that in. But I still remember um she she's talked about my weight a lot to other people and wow. at a competition at a, cro- a regional competition she was talking to my best friend about how big my legs are and for your mother <laughs> oh to that's talk your soft spot that, too like, come on yeah, mom fuck fuck right? Yeah, legs. Right? <laughs> why do we keep going back to the legs <laughs> yeah, which is ironic because she's got great legs oh. if you're sitting here on video right now you have amazing legs oh my god <laughs> so the and then at my wedding we just got married a year and a half ago. And so it was probably two years ago. Um, this was when my body started to change a lot. I was losing weight and, um, I'd gone from pretty big legs cause I was competing to my legs being much thinner of just them just going to the weight they wanted to be. And at our wedding shower, she's talking to my, um, best friend about how it's always like my best friend about how skinny I've gotten. And she's like, do you think she's lost too much weight? Oh it's like, God. fuck, it's like, stop talking about my weight. And yeah. it's just totally her projecting her yes. own shit, right? Yeah. Big time projection. And, um, whenever we get together, she always talks about how she's fat and she's not fat at all. And she just talks about, she just doesn't work out. She doesn't eat healthy. And she just talks about how she's fat and needs to lose weight. And oh, that's man. what I, That's what I see every single time we hang out. She talks about weight. And I try to, especially when I'm around women now, because I'm so much more aware of it, I don't talk about weight. Mm. I don't talk about my own weight. And that's all I used to do. And I don't talk about someone else's weight. I just don't talk about weight. It's just not, unless they bring it up and we start talking through like, okay, maybe they want to lose weight. Let's talk about how your diet should change or what maybe worked for me. But I really try to be aware of how I talk about my own body because I listen to other, I even listen to other podcasts when women are talking badly about their bodies or insecurities. I'm like, God, that's so unattractive, Mm. you know? And and I'm sure you see that as guys where that's just not it's, cute. It's almost it's almost because there's certain things that men and women will talk about that's almost like not just accepted, but like it's this is what we do, right? Like men will talk to each other about, you know, like we're supposed to talk about sports and sport, you know, and, and, and you know, cars and, you know, other stuff. And it's almost like women feel like they have to talk bad about themselves when they're around other women. Yes. Because it makes Ugh. almost like it's a way to make other women feel better or comfortable. Yeah. Is that true? Oh, yeah, totally. I, I, have you guys seen Mean Girls? No. No. God, come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they, it's like these girls are all in a room looking at, them, at themselves in the mirror, talking badly about themselves. It's and like then they're this, bonding over it. Yeah, they all talk shit. And then they look at the one girl who hasn't said anything and she's like, Oh yeah, I hate my legs. Like she just like makes up something because she like wasn't brought up in that in this movie, and that's what they do. They women just totally bond over it, and and so I try to if a woman starts doing that because I have friends who've just had babies and so they start talking about it or like and they're maybe fishing for compliments or whatever, and I just try to talk about something else and like. Just try to sway the conversation in the other direction because we all go through it. That's like that. That's like that uh, quote. What is it? Be careful of your thoughts because they become your actions. Be careful your actions because they become your habits. Be careful your habits because they become your character. Mm. Right. It's so true. It's like the things you feel like you're supposed to talk about, and then the things you're not supposed to talk about. Like I've trained a lot of uh, female clients who've had children, and I'll train them before, during, and after pregnancy, and we'll get really close because I've been training these people for years. And we'll have these conversations where you can tell they have such a difficult time talking about how hard it is sometimes being a mom or, or how hard this is. Or, you know, like I had one client who after she had her, 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 her baby, she didn't bond right away. But she, she felt like she couldn't talk about it because she felt judged by other women. Yes. Like, because oh. you're supposed to be like, it's supposed to be this great thing. And I love my kids so much. And I'm the greatest mom ever. And I'm so afraid to talk about how 
I don't know. I don't know if I like this and I don't know if this is for me. And it's kind of crappy that we're not, we don't let ourselves, you know, do that with each other. Do you think, is it because, is it self-inflicted or is it because do you think just the, just the way women are with each other? Cause I know guys have our own thing, which we can talk about also, but do you think it's self-inflicted or is it just, just the way women judge each other? I think it's just the way women judge each other. And I, I think about that. I don't, I don't know if we're going to have kids, if we ever will, but I always think about that. I don't share like any images of my husband. I talk about it a little bit, but I don't share that side of my life on social media because I can't imagine if somebody said anything bad about my husband, the way they talk about me sometimes. I Claws would, would come out for Oh sure. my God. Yeah. I like, I'm like getting sweaty thinking about it yeah. right now. I would just freak out. And so thinking about if I had children sharing any sort of my children on this on social media, not only would I not want to put that like print of them, like like when people share pictures of them, their kids like going to the bathroom on the toilet, not only does that open your life up to predators because the internet's fucking scary, but then it's like your child didn't even get to decide what they put on the mm. internet. And so when someone's searching them, when they're applying for jobs like then there's a picture of them taking a shit <laughs> like right. as a kid like right. that's so weird to me and but i also think about all of the women who will give you not only are they trying to help you but they're giving you like so advice so much advice that they're like oh you're doing this wrong you should be doing this and then you have a woman you're like oh i'm trying to figure out breastfeeding and then you have 4 million people telling you how to breastfeed and that you're doing it wrong and it's like Man, the the internet gives you so much help, but it just almost restricts you too. It's when fire, I, that's man. such a great topic. We talk about this all the time. That uh, I'm nervous for the generation coming up because I mean, and look at the way we market and advertise now with the feeds. Like, it, once you like something or Google something, now everything connected to that or just like that gets yeah. fed to you, and so the confirmation bias is crazy, and it's only going to get worse. So it will force the generation coming up now that when you start to consume information, if you just consume and you don't search outside of what you're being served already. Oh man, you're creating so many bubbles and so much radicalization of ideas. And yeah. everybody thinks like I do. And you know, there are no different ideas and they, they meet someone who has different ideas. And it's like shocking that somebody thinks differently. Yeah. It's a really scary, it's scary situation. So, it's so, yeah. it must be so scary as a parent gr- raising your children in this day and age. Oh, it's absolutely. Shit, that's why I'm scared to death to have them. It's, <laughs> so, so many but, reasons. You know, for, so to be, many reasons. To be fair, to be fair, it's always been scary. It's always been scary raising kids. Any, when you, as soon as you have a child, you you fully realize your how uh, your it's vulnerability. It's fucking different. It's now, like though, it's dude. like you're Superman. This is what it feels like before you have kids, before and after you have kids. After you have kids, you realized you were Superman before, and now you have kryptonite. Before I had kids, I had no kryptonite. Like literally, I thought I did. Like I thought I had weaknesses. Uh uh-uh. uh. Now that I have children, I know. But at the same time, it's forced me to grow in ways that I could have never grown before. Uh, or for me, I'm speaking just personally because I think you don't have to have kids to grow or whatever. But for me personally, it's you know, hindsight's 2020. 20, but I can see now that it's forced me to grow in ways that only the vulnerability of having children. Uh, can do for that could have done for me and so I'm I feel like I'm a better person but for sure like I was not I had no fear before I thought I was afraid before but I tell you what man I, I people used to laugh you know people that know me used to laugh I used to drive so fast I was a fucking maniac on the road I had no regard for anybody's safety the day I had my son who's my oldest Literally that day, I started driving like an 85 year old man, and I still do. Totally, I still drive super. It like changed overnight, and it's and I didn't even realize it until someone pointed uh, out new like perspective. Someone pointed out like, dude, why you you drive hella slow now? And I was like, oh, oh yeah, I guess I do. Yeah, it's because it's because I have my kids, and so it does it does force those changes. I wanted to ask you about your podcast because you started with your blog, that grew. It was pretty big before you started your podcast already. By that point, you had a pretty big following, right? Yeah, yeah. It, now, now, why the blog? I mean, excuse me, why the podcast? Why start the podcast? Well, I say I say this whenever someone asks why. So I started with food, and then I started talking about fitness because I was getting more questions about fitness. Readers were asking about fitness. And then I started posting about, um, 
like I was on book tour when I came out with one of my books and I was posting outfits and they were getting like three, four times the likes than my food posts. So I'm like, okay, this is feedback. People are obviously liking the fashion side. And so I started doing fashion. And so anything that I've done has grown off of readers feedback. Mm -hmm. And when I was on book tour, a woman asked when I was going to start a podcast. And I was like, well, why would I start a podcast? What would I talk about? And she was like, I don't care. I just like listening to you. Like, <laughs> And so that's why I started the podcast and just started talking about whatever from body insecurities to acne to um, how to create a better relationship with food. And then, and I was talking by myself for probably like 40, 45 episodes and it just gets hard to talk by yourself. And I yawn all the time because I'm not getting enough oxygen in. And so I'm like yawning my entire fucking podcast (laughs) and people are like giving me bad reviews. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't help it. And so I started bringing To carry it by yourself is no joke. I know. No joke. I talk about it it all the time. I would never do this if it was by myself. For real. It's so boring. And I do everything by myself all the time. Like, and I try not to just like talk about my business as much with my husband because, you know, it's just like talking business. Mm -hmm. And, but I'm like, who do I talk to? I talk by myself all day long. I do everything by myself. And so the podcast is hard by myself and it's been really fun having people on, you know, I had you on Sal and then I've had, um, some CrossFit people, some food bloggers. Um, I had any favorites. Um, I re- well, I just this one's just super new in my head. I recently had um, Lisa Bilyeu, who was the co-founder of Quest Nutrition. Oh, Tom's, Tom's wife. wife. Yes. So Tom's a good friend of ours. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I just had her on maybe three days ago, and not only you know she has her like British accent, yeah. and so it's just like fun to listen to her. But she calls you sweetheart, and she's just and she's incredibly engaging. And when you ask her a question, she asks you a question back, and so it's fun. It's like talking to a friend instead of um, here's a question, here's the answer. Very conversational. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it, she was really fun to yeah, have Yeah, we on. love the Bill Hughes. We were over there not that long ago over oh, at their cool. place and stuff. Yeah, but uh, fascinating individuals. Very yes. hardworking, fascinating individuals. It's, she was really fun. I like having her on. Talk about sure. how you how you balance um, your relationship with your husband. You're, you're sharing yourself with millions of people, essentially. And yeah, because I struggle with this. This is, myself. And, and I think this is one of the hardest things for us to do, right? Is that you know you're constantly giving to all these people and giving them all your attention, but then you have the most important man of your life that lives with you. How do you balance that and and, and separate the two? Uh, well, I think what's so he is just an awesome person. He's just so calm, collected, has his shit together all the time. Like that's, and I'm the opposite. I'm just like throw up on the floor like I'm stressed out all the time like I look constantly look at my watch of what my heart rate is because I'm sweating and I'm like thinking (laughs) about what what is next and he's so in the minute or like just in the real time don't stress about what you can't manage like the other day when I'm like stuck at the airport before I met him I would have been stressed out the whole day like I'm gonna miss dinner with these guys I'm so fucking pissed off and then I was like oh nothing you can do and that's all because of him and so I think he he lets me be me Mm. he lets me work till midnight he is your balance yeah he lets me do as much work as I want and because of that, he works harder, too, in his own life. And I think that's what's so cool is I've watched him work. He works Monday through Saturday. He always has. He's working, leaving at 7 a.m., not getting back Is he in a similar field or totally different? Totally different. Totally different. He's a GM of a business, and so he's managing everybody and um, dealing with everybody's screw-ups. And you know, his job is really hard, and it's really challenging, and he is overworked and overstressed constantly. And... You know, because of that, because of him working all the time, I work harder. I work on Saturdays now. I usually work on Sundays too. And he's just let me do that. And he's supported me. And he's like, you know what? I know you're working today. I'm going to go golf. And when I'm like, hey, I'm not going to work today. I want to hang out. Don't go golf. You know, we can find that balance too. But he's really let me be me. And that's what's so amazing about you, him. That's the best thing about good relationships. When, yeah. When you feel like you're yourself more with them than you are at any other time, that feels totally. that's, that's an incredible feeling. But he, the other, we got in like a fight recently and I was like, you're just, 
you work all the time, and then on Sundays, you know, maybe you're going golf or you, going golfing, or you have something planned. Like, when are we going to hang out? And he's like, "Well, maybe if you're not on your computer until midnight every night, we'd be able to." And I'm like, "Ooh, touche." <laughs> so I've been trying to. It's harder around the holidays because I'm a little bit busier, but I've been trying to work until he gets home work until I start cooking dinner for us. And then I don't open my computer. I have my couple posts that I have to do at night on Instagram, but I'm cuddling with him instead of on the other side of the couch on my computer. And we're getting time to, you know, touch each other mm-hmm. instead of just being on our phones next to each other. Cause it's so mm-hmm. easy to do that. And just having that one-on-one time, even if we're not talking, it's just better than me being. Across Isn't it the fascinating couch. for us that are in our thirties that we didn't even have that yeah. That, that has become such a major part to the point where we have to like disconnect from it. I find that so fascinating. Like, Isn't that so like weird? how did we get by to 20 years ago in relationships to, compared to now? Because this is consumed us so much that we have to do these things mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, I, I'm going to put this away. Like I have the same thing. I say, you know, I'm going to work till Katrina gets home. When she gets home, it's like I got to put it away. Otherwise, because it's hard because it's your work and you make money from it. And the harder yeah. you work, the more you get paid. And you and like totally. it and all that right. stuff. Yeah. Right. So it's really hard to not justify. It's like, well, you know, you're over here doing this, so I may as well do this. Like that's what I'm always saying to her or saying to myself is, well, you were doing that, so I'm going to do this. And the next thing you totally. go down the rabbit hole and I'm working yeah. for the next four hours. And so. then it's every day, every day. And right. it's. It's definitely that balance of saying, okay, I'm going to turn things off. And then I'll tell him sometimes, I'm like, I'm really sorry. I have to get this post done. And we find that balance. He's like, no problem. And sometimes he'll get some work done. But it's been more of that balance of cutting it off by 6 p.m., hanging out with him. And he, and we've talked, I've heard you guys talk about this. Maybe, I forget who's talked about it, like the love languages Mm -hmm. on here. And like physical touch is important to him. And so making sure phone and computer are away so we can have that physical touch and those moments together, even if we're just watching like Stranger Things or something like that. Just... You totally married to Katrina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everything you're describing, like how he is, I'm like, oh, dude, this is so like how she is for me, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you have to find what's important to them and make sure those- What is your love back. language? What do you? What is yours? Um, God, I've already forgotten. It's funny because I gave him this book. Affirmation or it would be, or touch or gifts or- there's five, um, right? So gifts, affirmation, touch. Um, You're like doing things for a person. What's that one? I, th- oh. I think that falls in the gift one, I think. No. No, because it's like. Thought action. Or, or, oh, ah, shit. You're, yeah, you're, yes. right. you're going like the right Like taking out the trash. Right. Or doing yeah. the yes, dishes. yes, yes. That's one, one that's Acts really Acts of important. kindness. Acts of kindness. Yes. yes. That's one. Like, I don't care about gifts, and he's an amazing give, gift giver. Like, he got me a dog. He surprised a dog at our doorstep, and my dog is my child. Like, <laughs> love him so much. But I'm big into acts of kindness and just. I cook, you clean, you take out the trash without me asking. Like those little things that I'm like, okay, you do care. And you're giving just as much as I'm giving in Mm -hmm. this relationship. I'm going to do all of this for you and you will meet me halfway and Mm -hmm. do things for me as well. So it's it's funny just finding those love languages. Anything in a relationship that you have found that you've you've had to kind of train yourself to do to be a better woman or a better partner that you have to like actively think about? Um, Not obsessing over the little things like you know when you live with someone and they just like he leaves all the drawers open in our dresser and I'm like our dresser is going to fall over at some point and not stressing out about those things or like the dishes aren't done not getting pissed off in a relationship it's just so pointless because we're gonna live with each other for the rest of our lives that's the plan here so why dwell over the little things and then not stressing and he's really taught me that I stress out about everything and I'll jump to conclusions and he makes me think more Mm. like calm down, settle down. Is this fight really worth having? And you saying things that you don't mean and are really mean. And I don't, and I've done that in past relationships. And Mm -hmm. because he's so calm and collected, I've really worked on that. Yeah. Definitely don't sweat the small stuff. I'll observe older couples that are happy. So like couples that are in their 60s and 70s and 80s. Oh, they don't give a fuck. Those and, are the, you know when they're like that, they're just like, ah, whatever. And that's what yes. I, I appreciate that about, yeah. about those couples is I'll see them. I used to train this, uh, this, this woman who was in her 70s and she, you know, her husband would come in sometimes and visit and they would say things to each other that if they were a younger couple, they would, it would start a fight. You know what I mean? Because you'd be so sensitive, so insecure. So, 
But to them, they're like, Ugh, they roll, their, they roll their eyes. Yeah, like, right? no, who cares? Like, we're, we're together. We're not going anywhere. And it made me realize, like, if you feel, if if each person feels confident that the other person is a good person, and that they're not going anywhere, and that they actually love them, all of a sudden, all those little things don't become totally don't become issues. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay, I know you made that comment, but I know you're a good person, and so it doesn't bother me. So I always always look at old couples as like like mentors, examples of how I want to be with my with my relationship where we're not going to trip over the over the little things. There's bigger things that we need to worry about than the than the small stuff. Yeah, and if you're if you're getting upset, it has to stem from some sort of insecurity totally. in your own relationship or in your own self. And that's I think the biggest thing. I feel so secure with him. I don't feel insecure and he's such a good person. So like what's who cares about a fucking drawer? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, shut the drawer. I'll shut the drawer and then I'll make fun of him on the side at one point and he'll do the same for me you know, and it's Now you're you're a, a an absolute machine and what I mean by that is I, I see your Instagram, I see your social media, your blogs like you're on it constantly and I don't mean constantly as in like all day but I mean you're consistent you're very consistent with your posts very consistent with your quality you're saying you're doing it all on your own so you're obviously just an absolute machine you also talk about stress though what do you do do you do are do you have any practices for that for yourself to manage that do you meditate do you do you take time off do you is it is it your workouts my workouts are definitely my stress whenever I'm upset about something especially my CrossFit gym, because I have so many close friends there. I mean, most of these people I invited to my wedding that I met to at the CrossFit gym. They are some of the coolest people I've ever known. And so that's my takeaway time. I'm not on my phone. I'm not on my computer. I'm not caring about someone attacking me online. It is my time to de-stress, to do something healthy for myself, and to just blank out for an hour and laugh with friends. I know I'm always going to laugh when I go into my CrossFit class. So if I'm depressed, something's upsetting me, I had a fight with my parents or something, I can go in there and it's calm and it's happy and it's a good place. I've never tried meditation. I've tried yoga before, but I've just never uh, been into it. I've never tried meditation. You don't like yoga. I, I would have guessed that for sure. Yeah. I Too just, slow. Oh man, yeah. I really try. I've tried many times in different kinds of yoga and I'm like, I am so bored. Yeah. I'm just so <laughs> bored. And it, coming from a place in CrossFit where, you know, we usually do a lift and then we do a Metcon. And so the lift is the time to talk with your friends. And so then you sit in an hour in silence. I'm like, I sit in a silence all day in my house. Like, <laughs> I... I don't want to sit in any more silence. Well, sitting in silence, what the true meaning of sitting in silence is sitting in, in doing nothing or just breathing. Yeah. Sitting in silence and working is not quite in silence. And I learned totally. that. I had to learn that lesson the hard way. And I was like you where you want me to take yoga? Like you want me to meditate? I'm going to sit here and be quiet. It feels like a complete waste of time. My mind is racing. I can't stand this. But what I started to learn is that it's a practice like anything. And the fact that I hate it so much probably means that you should do it. I need it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and it is really better. it is really I tell you what like I just went through I was married for 15 years and come from a very traditional uh, Italian family. Nobody gets divorced in my family. Like that's the worst thing you could possibly do. <laughs> so it's a very 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 difficult thing for me to go through and I know I have friends who've gone through divorce and I see the the, the damage that it does especially when you have children and and just the, the wreckage that follows. And I think as tough as it was, I handled it pretty well at the time launching Mind Pump with these guys. And then thankfully I had these guys that helped me out. But one of the things that helped me was that, was understanding and learning that piece, that meditation piece, understanding and learning to sit quietly and let myself feel. For me personally, I'm not saying this is you or anybody else, but for me personally, I learned that the reason why I hated to sit still is I didn't want to feel certain things. So it was distracting for me yeah. to do, to be busy and to do all. So when I learned to sit and feel, I actually got through it a lot easier. And now it's a skill that I have that I can use whenever any stressful or trying situation has come up. And now I'm finding myself far more even productive than I was before uh, in a, in less time because of that skill that I learned. So definitely something I would recommend it's funny trying. I've recommended meditation to my husband because he was dealing with some gut issues from all the stress in his life. And I'm like, you should definitely <laughs> try meditation, but I won't do it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's stupid. So I need to try it at some point, but I haven't 
I haven't added it to my to-do list yet. And anything I'm, anything right now that you're currently like working on within yourself or trying to grow through? Oh man, that's a hard one. I should be. Um I I'm gonna have to think about that. What about one goals? Now. Like, what are you, what are your goals right now with either business, fitness, I feel like, personal? I feel like goals is so generic. I feel like I know we all we've all got something that's like our Achilles heel or some like a, a bad habit that I return to or something that I'm I'm personally trying to work on to be better about. I mean, I guess the the time thing with uh, separating from work that's one for all of us. Like, can you think of things right now that you're you're currently working through? Um kill people with kindness when they're mean because I when you and I'm sure you guys have dealt with this on social media or like a bad review or something where you just want to jump down those people's throat and you want to prove to them like you know yeah you like, like no <laughs> yeah. like you are wrong right and I want to tell you why we've had those but it's what it's it's not going to change their mind at all so right. I try to more often I'm trying. It's not always happening, depending on the time of the month <laughs> and what kind of mood I'm in that day. But I try to say, thank you so much for your feedback. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful day when instead of explaining everything and just putting it, everything out there, when this person probably doesn't give a fuck and they probably won't look at this right. ever again. And I just say, okay, thank you for your feedback. And I try to actually take that feedback in maybe not the ones that your legs are so gross, yeah. but something, you know, whatever it is, and maybe take that feedback and understand it a little bit more and um, not jump down to their throat, thank them for their feedback right. and move on from it and grow from it because right. um, it's so it's so hard when people give you negative feedback. You know what I've tried to, I try and just look want at, attention. It, it took me a yeah. long time when we first started. I remember the first bad one I had and, and it, that it actually affected me and it affected me for a little while. And then I started to look at it differently and I started to go like, I'm going to start looking at the negative comments as gifts. And what I mean by that is, because if someone just says, hey, you're stupid, Adam, like that doesn't even phase me. It's like, that's lame. But if they hit something like my legs or like my calves or like a soft spot for me, <laughs> What I, and I, and it, it makes me irritated. I go, you know what? That was a gift for me that I have room to grow in that area. I still am not that comfortable with that because I'm allowing some stranger who I don't know who the fuck they are say something and it makes me want to respond. So I go, that's a gift. It's a gift that I have these these idiots. An that opportunity. Are, yeah, that it's an opportunity for me to work somewhere on myself because it actually affects me. Because if it didn't affect me, I've already grown through that, right? So, which I use the calf example, legs that wouldn't bother me. But if there it was something that did bother me or did poke at my ego a little bit, I go, oh wow, there's an area that I could work on, and it's then I revealing. start un, start unpacking that and saying, okay, where does it? First of all, where does it stem from? Why do I have it? And then how do I work through it? Yeah. And when I started to look at them like that, it was like, oh, cool. So then now, now when I search through and I see comments and I'm going through and there's, you know, of course you get hundred positive comments and then I got five bad ones. Right. And it's like that. Oh, that one stung. Yeah. And I wanted to say something that one. Then I stop. I don't respond. I go, wow. Why did that make me feel that way? Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Why do you, why are you bothered by someone calling you that? Adam? I'm like, okay, I got issues there, you know, and, and start to look at it like that. That's the advice I normally give the, this this younger generation that's dealing with this social media and hate and bullying and all those things like that. Say, well, you know, look at that as an opportunity for growth for you, that there's somebody who's poking at something. And the fact that it, it gives you a state change or changes your emotions or your feelings means that you do have something rooted there. And there's something that I can improve on. And it's not necessarily I need to go make my legs better to make this person happier. It's more so. I need to become more comfortable with who I am and love myself more. Mm -hmm. And so I think that switch helped me. And that's kind of the advice. It makes a huge difference. And it, it, that same exact thing happened to me when we first started the podcast. And then the second part was realizing like they just want attention. Yeah. Like I, I, people would go on my Instagram. This used to crack me up. Sometimes it happens still. But they'd go on my Instagram and they'd go, the comment would be unfollow. Like, like they want me to know that they unfollowed that me. All the, of a that's the weirdest thing when people do that. <laughs> that's so stupid. A, that is Who, a, that like, is I've a, unfollowed hundreds of people I don't put and unfo never yeah. once I have I told so them. I'm going to send you an no, email to let you know that I unfollow. Go. Yeah, because and I get emails where people are like, I just want to let you know I'm unfollowing you. I'm like, go away. They actually, weirdo. they actually sent an email. Yes. To oh, that's take the time to send an email. That is and so that's the great. thing. It's like realizing because for me personally, you know, I, there's the self-growth that comes from it. Like, why am I being so affected by this? So I need to become comfortable with that and be able to handle that. And the second thing is I do find a little empathy 
because I used to get pissed off at people. Then I started realizing eh, they just want attention. And why? Right. Why do they want so much? Why do they want this attention? They obviously feel ter- there's something they feel so terrible about that it, they want the attention of saying something negative to someone else because it makes them feel they're heard. Pro- they're projecting their insecurities. Yeah, but it's it makes no it, different than what you talk about with yeah. your mom. If someone yeah. is making a comment about your legs, it's really a reflection of themselves. It's really like, I've got issues with my, my legs or, or a part of my body, so I'm going to point out something there, on her no, to make her yeah. feel this way. No right? self-confident person is going to put a comment like that. No. no, there is nobody on earth who's really self confident. That's, that's like, truly self confident. I feel, you know, right? I'm going to take five minutes to post a comment to tell this person that I don't like their calves or something like that. Like, like nobody- I don't even have time to post a nice comment, let alone post a negative one. Right. It takes like, more energy to be negative. Isn't that funny how I mean, yeah. people still do that? Mm-hmm. It's it's so weird. And I've and I've had I've had, when we like talk about their different ones. Like I've had this woman who had grandkids and she was calling me a slut. I was like, <laughs> what? What? What the hell? Like, isn't that so sad that these children have that to look up to? So sad. But then I had, I did this post and um, it had real fur, like this co- coat hood. Oh, good and luck. I know. And I had no idea because I'm like so used to companies using faux fur. I don't even sure. think about it. Right. And man, like people are just coming after me about, you know. Uh, the name of your blog is Paleo. I know. You eat animals. I so know. Let's, like, it the, was, man, it was like coyote how can fur. Some, how can someone get mad that you wore a fur when you probably cook with? Yeah. And, and I get it. Like, like I'm using the whole animal. Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. I made this. I made this coat myself. And I totally get where they're coming from. So that was more great feedback of like, you should be doing more research on the companies and the things that you're buying. And I'm like, okay, that is completely fair. And I really appreciate that feedback. And they're like calling me like a sellout. I'm like, you know what? I'm so sorry. I get where you're coming from, but it's not just like, you're a slut. I'm like, what the fuck from a grandma? And so there's all kinds of different. She's difference. jealous. <laughs> Damn. It was she, so, that was a weird How one. often do you get uh, people asking you like, they want to do what you've done? Like, how do I start a blog? And how do I start a podcast like you? And I want that lifestyle where I can kind of start work whenever I want to. Do you get asked that a lot? A, a lot. All the time. I have a podcast about it. So I usually point them in that direction. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I What's did. What's the like, name of it? Um, how I became a full time blogger. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I just like that. That was the episode, not a podcast. Oh, 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 yeah, oh yeah, an yeah. episode podcast. Yeah. Episode. Okay. So I have an episode about um becoming a full time blogger and how I did it, and so that I show that roadmap. And I've met up with a couple people um just in coffee when I'm just like feeling just in the mood to meet up with someone. I don't do it very often because I have social anxiety already, but. Um, I'll meet up with people once in a while and just kind of talk it through, talk it all through. What but do you, what do you think the mistakes are that you see that you see these people that want to do that? Like I see it all the time, and I feel like some people just they're not even asking the right questions. There's so many other steps that they need to do first before you decide I'm going to go full time blogging. Like what do you what do you see? What do you see? Like what are the misconceptions of doing what you do? I I it and it all goes back to fitness. I feel like things always go back to fitness, but it's people don't want to put in the work mm-hmm. and. If you're not willing to put in the work and the time and not really see the results and Mm. reap the benefits for a while, then you're you might not get there. Some people maybe like you just start a blog and it becomes instantly huge and you start making thousands of dollars. One of one in a million, right? Right there. Yes. But I mean, I did this blog. I went in not knowing you could make money off of it. But even when people were telling me it was stupid, I continued to do it. And my friends were like, why would you even do this? I'm like, I don't know. I just like doing it. And that's what continually um, helped helped it really grow was putting in the work day after day and setting standards for myself. Because if I am working for myself, I can post whenever the hell I want to. But I say, okay, I'm going to wake up every day at 6 a.m. and I'm going to finish my blog and get it up by 7 a.m. And so people know that when they log on, the post is there and a newsletter goes out every Friday. So they'll have a newsletter with all my posts. It's all about consistency. And it just like fitness, it's all about consistency. If you will put in the work, you will see the benefits later on. Um, So that's more than anything. People think that, uh, like owning your own business or even blogging, it's just easy and it's not. And it is the best thing ever by far, but I have to work 
morning till night every day. And there's a lot of back end stuff that people don't think about oh, yeah. and a mon- money that goes into it. So I just tell them more than anything, be true to yourself, be your own personality, because that's what people will follow you for and work every single day at it. How do you how do you monetize mostly right now? Is it your books or your or the, I noticed you have an apparel line? It's, it's all kinds of different things. Books are very small. When Whenever people are like, oh, you, like my grandparents, I don't think my grandparents don't understand what I do no. whatsoever, yeah, yeah. but they're like, oh, she's a cookbook author. And that's like such a small amount of my time <laughs> and my income. It's just this little baby piece. Um, so I monetize mostly from advertising on my website. So the ads you'll see that say you were just looking at a supplement line, that supplement line Pops comes up. up. Right yeah, right. And the advertising on there. Um, I do a lot of affiliate programs. So I work with a meal planning um, online tool. Mm. I work with Like to Know It for fashion. Um, I do, I mean, there's all kinds of different affiliate affiliates that I work with. Um and sponsored posts. So tomorrow I have one with eBay. On Friday I have one with Nike. So I have lots of different um, companies that I work with, uh, like Nordstrom. Explain and how that works. How does that work? What do you mean? They that? pay you for your blog or your yep, article? They pay for a sponsored post. So an actual post just on your blog that will be there forever, a certain amount of okay. time. And That's great. then it has affiliate links in it. So I make the sponsored post rate and then any sort of kickbacks. If you purchase something for my eBay post, I'll get a kickback from that commission. Now, did you negotiate that directly with Nike and and how did that happen? So it's all kind of different. Um, Like to know it that I do my fashion posts through. A lot of the sponsored posts come through them. So I tell them, this is my price for a sponsored post. Here's my analytics. So you can see how how much traffic I get to my blog. And then... um, I, th- I don't know if they sell me to different companies or maybe Nike comes to them and says, we want to reach a certain amount of people who are the best people in your network to work through. And they sort of start that relationship. And then I've had um, companies contact me directly, ask for analytics on my site, and then we negotiate price just directly. Oh, that's cool. How long did that's it awesome. take before that started to happen to you? How much work did you put in before that? Because that sounds great. And that's what everybody's yes. searching for is to get yeah. to that point. Yeah, how you- long before you went full time? It was probably... I think a year in, I started Google ads on my website. So I was making like 300 to $500 a month just off these Google ads. And then um, Paleo Company started contacting me probably a year in. And I didn't have any sort of numbers of sponsored posts. So a lot of things I just did for free. Like they were going to send me free products. So I was going to post about them on my site. Mm. And then after a time, I'm like, oh, I no, I shouldn't be doing this for free and talking to more people. This I want to make this a gig. So it was probably two years of writing my blog, not really making much money off of it. And if I did make any money, it would go into the grocery shopping to create those posts. So it was probably two years before um, I was really able to monetize in a bigger bigger arena. But it was just probably in the last two years, especially fashion. I just started getting into fashion about two, two and a half years ago that that market opened up even more for me. You know, the rules of business always apply, right? Like you got to bust your ass for about one to five years and then you start to reap the benefits of, you know, what you've sowed. But, But those first two years you busted your ass and you were consistent. Yeah. And it's still is, you know, like as soon as I finish this podcast with you, I have to go finish a post. And then tomorrow morning I'm shooting outfit photos at eight in the morning. And then I have an interview and it's just making sure you get those things done. And because if you mess up on a post that's with Nordstrom, that's not a good relationship to burn, you know? So it's, still busting your ass every day and but yeah you just working hard for no money do you do you have a lot of young girls that look up to you as a role model I don't know do you I think you're a role model I hope so I I want to be in a, a role model that I didn't have in the way um be a badass female who's not obsessing about body but who is able to work hard both in the gym, in the kitchen, in their relationships, and be a confident person. That's what I want to be. I wish I would have had those role models um, of women who were confident. I didn't have that. And so hopefully I am a good role model and and an opinionated role model. I get a lot of people who email me about cussing and using... I love that. It's so weird. It's like... Who, it's real. It's just like... Who 
who doesn't cuss? Isn't there like, a saying that you shouldn't trust anybody that doesn't swear? That's so yeah, weird. Yeah. It's a sign of intelligence. They've actually done studies on this now. Of course, it was excessive. Like when we first started the podcast, we were nervous. So every other word was the F word. But it's a sign of, it's a sexual sign of intelligence that they've done studies on this and show that people, it's true. <laughs> so we tell ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is what you got to tell yourself. <laughs> I did totally. a study on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I get people who will email me sometimes of like, there are kids out there. And I'm like, okay. But I, I hope I'm a good role model in, ways that I wish I would have had when I was growing up and especially with the internet you know we didn't have the internet when we were younger and now there's so much out there of women just half naked and in thongs and I want you know I want to I want to show women that you can take care of your body and you can be confident you don't have to just be naked all the time like there's other facets facets of life that are really important and I it's hard it's harder on the internet to find that sometimes when Maybe you follow a lot of fitness people, so your explore feed is all naked people all the time. So I want to show women that they can be confident in so many other ways, right. and they don't just have to just be that. Well, no hate on that. Show your ass. You go, girl. You yeah. go, baby boo. <laughs> Whatever what, you do, you. But right. yeah, I hope so. Oh, you're awesome. Yeah, we I think you're a badass. Oh, thank yep. you guys you for having me. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Yes, this has been awesome. Yeah, we loved it. We got to do can another one. Just hang out for like five more hours. Absolutely. Yeah, we will. Ordering yeah. some food, yeah. stay in these comfy couches. <laughs> Excellent. Check it out. Go to YouTube, subscribe to Mind Pump TV. We post lots of videos on fitness, nutrition, and sometimes uh, funny stuff. So go check it out. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>